Hello, directors. Today we are talking about division. So this is week six. And of course, first five minutes, set my timer. I do the number knockout game. When the five minutes are done, we are done with that. Then we move on to the cover. Uh, the cover this week is this. And so, um, oh, actually a lot of times I'll open up the book, have them check our domain, see where we are for the week, check it on the compass list, which is that second page. Then we go on to the cover. So, um, division, we were talking about division and I mentioned to the kids, um, God saw the light, God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. With that line of Genesis in your minds, what do you see when you look at the artwork cover? And so you can let them start talking. Some of them might even recognize what the artwork is from. This is actually a portion of the Sistine Chapel and they may remember that from foundation days and Michelangelo studies and drawing and painting upside down by laying on the floor. So you can remind them that this is part of the Sistine Chapel. And so this portion of it is meant to be God separating, um, God's separation of light from darkness. And so that's what this section is right here. So division sometimes is scary. We think about, uh, division problems being maybe some of the harder problems that we have to tackle, but division isn't always a bad thing. God used it to divide certain things in, in our world. And what, what other things did he divide? God divided the waters, light from darkness, good from evil. And then in Psalm 103, line 12, it says, sin separated us from God, but in Christ, my sin is separated from me as far as the East is from the West. So if you're not getting a lot of talk from your kids, you can bring some of those things up to kind of help relate it to them. Then um, we read the quote from Tolkien, and I just had a little note, separation can be difficult, but we trust in the light to lead us. And then we have our reflection from Lancelot Andrews, and um, my notes just said, divide our actions, separate ourselves from sin. And you can say any other reasons you think this was chosen for division or what it shows. And this whole conversation for the cover should be no more than 10 minutes. And then we can move on to dialectic and those invention pages. Okay, so first we'll talk about the invention page, the one on the left, and picking some of the five common topics. So uh, first of the five common topics, compare the mapping for um, function and relation. So I think the big thing to get here, this is kind of also talked about on the definition of function and relation, is that uh, for function, and we've been talking about functions, you have inputs. You can have one input or you can have many. So you can have in, input or inputs. You have your function and then you get one output. So this has to be singular one output versus relation works differently. So relation is where you only have one input, but you can end up having one output or you could have many outputs. Okay, so that's just something to point out is that the, the function will only have one output. Relation can have multiple outputs. Uh, also definition, that's the thing to focus on for definition. The circumstance question. So what are the circumstances of dividing by zero? And I probably don't need to write this on the board, but sometimes it helps to see this. So if you asked any of the kids, what happens when you take a number and you divide it by zero? What happens if I throw five in my calculator and I divide it by zero? Well, it's going to say error because it can't do it. It doesn't think it's possible. It's not that it's not possible. It's that it's, it's undefined. And we'll talk more about this when we start talking about limits and, and getting down to the limits, but not actually touching that amount. So we, we can have that infinite line that gets infinitely closer to the limit, but we don't actually reach that limit. And so it's also infinite. And so it's not that it, it doesn't work or that it's, uh, it's an error. There actually is an explanation. It's just that we don't have it in our level of math yet. And the calculators are not smart enough to, to figure that out for us. At least not most of our basic calculators. Okay. Uh, so that's the circumstance for dividing things by zero. 
The next thing is for the five common topics, relationship. So the relationship of multiplication versus division. So the idea that multiplication, you're taking your factors and you're building that up and you get to your product. So you get to a larger, bigger number and division is just the opposite. You have your larger, bigger number and you're breaking it down into parts. So um, just knowing that they're inverses of each other. And that's really helpful when we start dealing with fractions and we're trying to simplify. And sometimes if division's too complicated, we can switch things over to multiplication and keep working our problems or it makes it easier to work our problems. So knowing that they're inverses of each other and related to each other, that's helpful. And then the last thing is um, authority. They mentioned the authority of the closure. So uh, this is the idea that, okay, if I have two natural numbers, so here's my little sign for natural numbers. And in addition, I can have my two natural numbers, two plus three. And um, if we have that, we're going to get five, which is another natural number. So that, that works out and you can get to that. But in the case of division, it doesn't always work. You can divide something and actually more often than not, sometimes you can get a natural number, but more often than not, you're going to end up with some rational number. So in this case, you'd have one half or 0 0.5, something in a decimal or fractional format that makes it a rational number. And so that does not work for the closures. The, um, so it's closed under that operation. So it was open for the operation of addition because it worked out to a natural number, but it is closed for division because it doesn't stay as a natural number. That's all that closure that they're talking about for authority of the closure. I did not talk about that in my class because I felt like that was going to be like way over their heads. But um, Dr. Gilpin mentions it in the tutor notes, so I always stick it in there. Next is the next page next to it, which has all the laws on it. And um, you can ask them to attend to this. What do you recognize? What do you see? We've been talking about these laws for the last few weeks, or they've been working on their student notebooks and they've been having to recognize what those laws are. They've been having to work problems where they show how the laws work. So they should have hopefully some familiarity with these. But if, um, if they don't, you might wanna use the flashcards that I made. Sorry, I have to keep going and grabbing stuff off my desk. So I actually, um, I did this last year. I don't have all of them made, but I have like the first six or seven. And the first six laws are the ones they're using the most of at this complex monomials levels. So um, I, I did these as a way to just help attend to this. So um, you can even write in the back like commutative law, and then you can quiz yourself and say, okay, the commutative law, let's see, in addition, that works. And in, or in, uh, multiplication commutative law works. A times B equals B times A. But in division and subtraction, doesn't work out. So those those ones do not work. And so I have a not equals to in this case. So it's a way to look at the look at the law, look at an example with actual numbers, and then either just kind of attend to it and try to memorize it and understand it, or they can quiz themselves if they write the name of the law on the back and try to remember what the different laws are. So like here's identity law. So I just made these there. I printed them out on cardstock and then my idea is my kid can just kind of flip through it and look at it. Um, so if you wanna do this for yourself, that's fine. Or if you want to help the kids and they say, and they don't seem to recognize a lot of them, share them with the parents. And then they have other flashcards that are available to kind of practice these ideas. This also provides a really nice like reference sheet that they can go back to anytime they're working with any of those laws in mathematics, because it, it does show so many of them right here on one page. So that's pretty helpful. Okay. Um, And if you don't want to do anything with the flashcards, just, just attend to it, see what they recognize, see what they want to talk about from it or, or how they are recognizing what some of those things mean. 
And then um, in terms of the charts, it says she, Dr. Gilpin mentioned the um, key thing for this week is understanding inverse operations. So that's what we talked about. Multiplication is growing larger as you're multiplying two factors together to get your product and division is undoing the multiplication. So it's breaking it down. Um, and then the other thing is uh, division using multiplication and um, I actually talk about this in my program too. Let's see. So 3x divided by 6. This is the example I use in my lesson with the kids. Okay. So um, 3x divided by 6 all divided by 2x divided by 5. This is the idea that you can just multiply by the reciprocal and it's a lot easier to calculate these division problems. So 3x over 6 doesn't change at all but this time we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which of course the reciprocal is just flipping that fraction. So it'll be five over two X. So we flip it to make the reciprocal and then we change the sign to multiplication. And now I can just multiply straight across. So three X times five is 15 X. Six times two X is 12 X. The X's cancel. 15 over 12 simplifies. And so you end up with five over four. So on division problems, you might be able to multiply the reciprocal and it'll just make it easier to keep working it. So that was the other key thing that they wanted to focus on on this week for multiplication. Okay, the next thing is uh, any aha moments. Anybody want to share something from last week? Um, bring in any problems? And then working through the tops for the student pages for the week. And um, like I've mentioned, I would take the board, I had a larger board in my class, and I could divide it into four sections. Somebody mentioned they don't really have a large board in their class, and what I would probably do is um, take some of that tearaway paper, you know how you can get those big um, like poster board, but they're not poster board, they're, it's like cheap paper, it's just they have sticky on the back of them. I had a big sheet of that because we'd write our Annie charts on it, um, but you can take that and you can pre-write out some of the problems or write them out on those little sticky guys and then they can be filling in the answers on there but everybody in the class then can see what the answers are with that so i liked having it where the kids can solve it in the small groups and then the larger class is all filling out all the answers for those tops and then they have some of their work done when they head home okay um go through the catechism at this point in time they pretty much have that down in their head so it's quick to just ask the questions and they give the answers and then in my lesson plan, you'll see those note cards. I'll attach the lesson plans in the description here of this video, and I'll also um, link to the PDF so you can print those off if you wanted to or share them with your families. Okay, so short, simple week. Division isn't as scary as it has to be. Oh, and another plug for my Math Explorers program. I, on Math Explorers, I go through ratios. We simplify with division problems. We simplify with fractions. Um, I'm showing examples where we have imaginary numbers and then we have other variable numbers like you'd have in monomials. And so each day has its own like about 15 minute lesson that's going through all those skills that they're gonna work on on their practice pages. So if you're having kids that need a little more instruction, for sure, be sure to share mathexplorers.net. And thank you all for those of you who are using it already and giving me lots of great feedback. So thanks so much.